Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. Hey, so today we're going to talk very briefly about uh, the role of breast ultrasound and an approach to using breast ultrasound in correlation with mammography, tomosynthesis, and other sort of breast imaging um, and what, you know, how to approach looking at this sort of study. So breast ultrasound is has a role in the initial imaging for younger patients, if there's a focal concern, um, and for screening of women at high risk or with dense breasts. Um, you know, there's going to be, you know, variations in use based on practice setting, local regulations, um, and like with breast uh, mammogram, tomosynthesis, and MRI, a lot of the wording that uh, and kind of way in which these are reported is dictated, you know, is determined by the most recent BIRADS lexicon. Um, well, I'll t touch mainly on kind of like practical and th uh, considerations and things to think, keep in mind as we go about this exam. Okay. Uh, in terms of larger overall sort of organization of what we're going to do, the, the, probably the most important thing or one of the most important things is to understand, um, you know, if we're doing a focused ultrasound uh, or kind of a screening ultrasound, you know, know the history of the patient. If there's known abnormality, the risk factors. If there is a known abnormality, know like the quadrant, radial position, the distance from the nipple, um, and have a sense of what the uh, known thing looks, you know, known abnormality looks on prior mammograms, other prior breast imaging. Um, you want to have a sense as to if what you're seeing on ultrasound corresponds. If you do find something that it corresponds to the known abnormality, sometimes you can find something new. It can be confusing. Um, and and, and, and uh, what is seen on prior imaging may not be seen on ultrasound and you're detecting something new. It's really good. It's important to um, make sure that th those really are corresponding. Um, if you're doing an ultrasound as a standalone exam, such as, you know, um, screening in certain populations for uh, a focal abnormality, you want to be um, particularly good about making sure you understand that whole patient history and prior studies, which, um, you know, if, if it's not being done concurrent with, you know, a mammogram for which you're already going through that full process. Um, so let's go through and kind of take a look at what some of these images look like um, for a screening whole breast ultrasound. So this is uh, ultrasound of the bilateral breasts. And as you can see here, uh, our institution, what we do, um, is that in terms of just for documentation, we get each quadrant of the breast, the retroareolar region, and the axilla. Um, in real time scanning, um, you know, we, we have sonographers um, who will help key us into abnormality, but for real time scanning, um, you can go through the breast in a concentric radial or uh, and then anti radial uh, sort of pattern, or do it, you know. Um, you know, back and forth in a sagittal transfer scanning pattern. So these are the saved images that arise, um, basically just showing normal breast tissue in, in, in the right breast at the, you know, rate radial at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And then, as, as I mentioned, we also do a retro areolar, and then we look at the axle, and that's the right breast, and then we're kind of going through the same, the left breast, 12, three, six, nine, retro aerial, and at the axilla. And as we're going through these, you know, um, and it, it's, it's more, um, you know, uh, there's going to be a lot more information as we re real time scan. Kind of key considerations to keep in mind is that as we're going, uh, you know, scanning, you want to go as far laterally as the mid axillary line. Um, when you're scanning up into the axillary tail um, because the glandular tissue can be present all the way there. And, it, and the axillary tail may go as superiorly as the clavicle to, so to make sure that we're not missing um, potential you know, glandular tissue, potential abnormality in that distribution as well. Um, as we look through, and in here we only have the still images, but just um, to kind of give you, you know, a sense. The retro aerolar region can be very easy to kind of pass by quickly and to um, miss introductory abnormalities, uh, to miss subtle abnormality from shadowing. Uh, so it's, just, it's important to make sure that we are kind of looking at these various angles and be sensitive to um, subtle abnormality in this region. Um, as we go through things to keep in mind as to what we're looking for is that if we are seeing a potential abnormality is to optimize the focal zone for all potential findings and to make sure that the depth is set um, to, to optimally evaluate any sort of abnormality. Um, 
if we're looking with, you know, using techniques of harmonic and compound imaging to look at all abnormalities with and without the both of those, and, and then ultimately to, you know, to correlate anything we're finding across other modalities that may have previously been obtained. Um, if we have... Uh, if we do our find an abnormality, we want to we want to take a look at it with color Doppler as well, particularly if it's potentially cystic, and to you know to um, ascertain between cystic and solid. Um, uh, you know if we're if we're looking at vasculature, if we're looking to see if there's flow within a finding, you want to be particularly careful that you give, you know, at most uh, kind of light compression as if there's too much pressure on the breast that can actually reduce or stop flow that you would normally be seeing. Um, describing any sort of abnormality should be done within the context of, you know, the most recent BIRADS lexicon, you know, for masses, for example, you want to think about shape, orientation, margin, echo pattern, posterior features, you know, if there's any echogenic material, you know, findings that you're describing as calcification and then you know uh and then thinking about potential associated features of our shell distortion or involvement of duct skin you know uh, edema of the breast vascularity things like this um and so basically uh you know just as a quick recap if we you know, ultrasound of the breast is done in very particular circumstances for focal abnormalities, for screening in certain populations, whether young or high risk. Um, and, and when it's done in correlation, um, you know, simultaneous with uh, mammography, it's important to kind of make sure that any potential abnormality that we want to look at with both um, modalities is really this, you know, we're really looking at the same thing um, across these different exams big picture sort of approach, you know, understanding the patient, what's been seen on prior imaging, um, you know, what, you know, focal symptoms, focal abnormality we're evaluating, and then as to go through, and then for screening things, looking through the various quadrants, the axillary tail, making sure that we're capturing the fullness of um, where that glandular tissue could be as well as in the axilla, and being, you know, careful to modify, you know, um, to look with both with and without harmonic imaging, compound imaging, and being careful that we are being good about uh, appropriate level of compression with a color Doppler.